All right, so Justin just showed up with his, uh, his nice airplane. Um, I've never seen a fork like this. We're going to zoom in on that later uh, or now, but uh, that's something else right there, boy. Um, but right now we're working on the engine mount. He brought the uh, engine mount here. Uh, didn't really have the time to get it powder coated because this install really came up quick. So Alyssa ran it down, got it powder coated, and uh, now we're mounting it. We started out with the pilot holes in the airplane and a step drill and we just brought them up to about 5 16 everywhere. Then we started, we reamed one hole at a time. We always start with these top two. We had a, a reamer for that um, that we could use when the engine mount was off the airplane. Later on, once we had this one and that one bolted, we ended up using a 3 8 drill on the other two, looking through the holes, making sure that we were lined up with the existing holes. We had to pull this one on just a tiny bit while we were drilling, and the same with that one but not forcing anything. Uh, we then put the two top bolts in that came in the kit from Viking, put some temporary spacers and some temporary nuts on the back that were not locking kind. And we were doing that because we want to kind of hold the mount firmly on the airplane prior to working on the top part. We also uh, don't have the, and this is not something that is, uh, you can do one way or the other. Um, the steel weldments are not installed in this airplane, so we're just going to fit the mount and then we're going to fit the steel weldment in one corner as we move along. And we'll show that later, but right now we just want to get all four, five, six uh, bolts in there. Up on the top, we have this handy dandy clamp. It's a welder's type of clamp and that fits nicely around here. So you can go in and clamp that in place. When you do that, you want to make sure that the airframe is straight, that this is moved into the center and this is moved to the center. Um, and you do that prior to clamping it and then you work your way up. Start with like a eighth inch drill bit on a hole here, center it so that you can be sure that you're gonna hit a part of the pad on the back side so that you can have an even amount of edge distance in order to get your bolt in later. Work it up with a 3 16 and eventually a quarter inch drill bit. Bolt one side in and then you can remove your clamp and then start work on the opposite side, line that up. Uh, start with an eighth inch and then work your way up. Use the brand new fresh drill bits for this job, particularly up here because it's really hard, 41, 30 steel, and you have two plates you have to go through and you want to make a nice clean shot. So that's where we're at right now. We're gonna uh, snug things up a little bit, vacuum clean, and then we're gonna start installing our pads on the uh, four corner mounts. Tell us what you did one more time. <clears throat> All right, so we did, uh, we just finalized with the quarter inch and uh, put a reasonable amount of just steady pressure, low RPM, got that one through. And so now we have a quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on this one. Uh, length of these bolts are, they're obviously dash numbers when it comes to a, a number four bolt, but if you measure it, we just measured one, it's uh, seven eighths of an inch long. And we have a dash four washer on the outside, one on the inside, and then a uh, uh, nylon uh, nut on it on each side. Uh, first thing I want to do is I just want to get that 3 8 hole in the front of it because then I can pull it into the see how there's a little gap there we can pull it into the firewall and once we get it pulled up <clears throat> then we can drill from the bottom up using the existing frame so I'm just going to mark it up front here and I'm going to drill that on the bench and then we'll pull it together with a short temporary bolt like this thing here 
and I like to have s some uh, nuts without the locking for this kind of purpose, just for temporary assembly. So we'll drill it, and then uh, we'll drill from underneath these guys, and uh, this guy. This one's going to have to be countersunk or uh, or a low profile, and then we can put it all together. All right. So in order to fit these <coughs> these uh, engine mounts in here, we uh, Took a temporary bolt. Basically, we had a. We can see it on the other side there. We just kind of took a short, like a one-inch, fully threaded, three-inch bolt, and we bolted it in with that, just just to get going. And then we drilled from the bottom, clear coated. We had already done that here. On the front here, we also countersunk, and we're using a structural screw there because we're going to have a nut here, and it's tight to that screw. So that's how we're going to get the room to do what we're trying to do. So we got two AN3 screws or bolts going through here and then we've got the structural screw in the front and now we're going to tighten it all down with the washers underneath the airplane. Good. Okay so we did um, pull the engine mount from the powder coater and we're able to uh, fit it to the pilot holes that Zena had put in there. We talked about that a little bit. <clears throat> we drilled everything up to 5 16 using a uni bit because we know the mount fits this airplane exceptionally well so we knew that we would be at least that close and then we drilled slash reamed one hole put the bolt in temporary nut on the back side with no uh, locking in it these are handy to come by just get yourself a handful of the non-locking 3h 24 nuts for that kind of stuff <clears throat> we started assembling the mount to the airframe um, once we had it all drilled to the airframe, this airplane didn't have the steel uh, <coughs> buckets on the back side. So once we had it all fitted to the airplane, we removed the mount again, and then we used short bolts to hold these cups to the pre-drilled firewall in order to then clamp these down, drill, and put the nuts on the bottom. And we did that also on the bottom ones, and we were able to... Um, Clico as we went with 316's Clicos and we were able to get a countersunk bolt or underneath that special MS nut that's supplied in the kit. And now we're going to work on installing the uh, engine itself to the mount. All right, um, ready. So we did uh, hoist the engine with some straps. There's a couple of holes in the cylinder head here, one here, one here. Those are handy for the, for the straps to just kind of go right through there. And of course you want to make sure you're not going to slide off your lift. So we, we went back here. On the other side, we just go around the plastic manifold. The plastic manifold is exce uh, exceptionally strong. So if you catch it like right here and right here, that's plenty strong. And once it's hanging, you're going to need some stabilizing uh, ties. Like this one, what it does is it pulls the engine towards us in order for the two bottom engine mounts to be level with the ground. Okay, the engine, this is not level and this is not level. The, the intake manifold is tilted to the left uh, and the intake is to the right and that's what's level. So you can tell by how the engine mounts are level. And this is just getting it ready for mounting so it makes it easier. And then of course this plane should be parallel with the, with the engine mount on the firewall. So if we look at the firewall, <clears throat> we kind of see that if we look from the side that it's leaning back a little bit. So most likely once we get close, rather than fighting this and changing the engine, we'll just lift the tail of the airplane up or whatever we have to do to, uh, to make that uh, level. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is trim one of these washers. Sometimes we remember to do it in the kit before we send it out and sometimes we don't. But if we don't, the reason you're gonna trim one of these on your bandsaw or your grinder is if you look in here, and uh, let's just say we had a rubber donut in there, <coughs> or an engine mount, it's pretty close to the engine, like right here. And what you don't want, it doesn't matter if the rubber hits the engine, because the rubber obviously is, is uh, vibration isolator but what you don't want as you can see down here this all become one 
the bolt is one with the mount is one with this washer and this washer when that all gets tightened down if something vibrates against this washer it's just the same as vibrating against the mount uh, because it's part of the mount when it's tight so you don't want this to touch the engine. The rubber can touch the engine as much as you want. Now, it's fine down there. Up here, if I put that washer up in there, you can see the washer is now going to hit the casting of the engine in that particular location. So let me go and trim it, and we'll be right back to it. All right, so get your, uh, your engine mount bushings out. These are silicone based, so they won't, you'll actually see, and I, I'm gonna mention this right off the bat, because going to happen on every one of them. You'll see little hairline cracks on the edges within days of mounting them. And that's that's just how they are. They're silicone, they're not FAA certified, but they are softer and they're they're allowed on home builds to use the silicone. Uh, so, yeah, we have to live with little hairline cracks on the edges, but we get the advantage of being able to use a softer material. So, I go with that. It gets less vibration into the into the airplane. Now it has a bushing inside, so when you start torquing it down, there's no real torque. You're just going to tighten the bolts until everything is solid, meaning the bolt hits the bushing, the bushing hits the mount, and the nut hits the mount. So you'll feel when it's bottoming out. So this one's easy. We'll show that one first. There's a couple of little things to point out on this one and, and the one on the other side. So we'll do that. We'll do that afterwards. So now we've got a AN6 washer and then a fender washer. And then we've got a fender washer here. And then we're going to put um, AN6 washer and a nut there once everything is lined up. Now this one <clears throat> it's not hard to do. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you can go in from the from this side too. It doesn't really matter. Some people like to see all the bolts go in from the same side. If you're going to do that, then you just have to plan it out basically. Put put every all this stuff together ahead of time and put it all the way through um you know as you go move the washers everything forward so that you can put all that in there um, by itself that way it's easier at the end like you can get that in there now you can pull the bolt back and put the other piece in so that way you know it's possible to do and it's not a bad way but you can also, like I said, you can also put the bolts in from the other side. It doesn't really matter to me. Some people are real picky. They want the nut in one way and the bolt in another way. And in the end, when it's all done, it's all the same. Now, I am going to lift the engine up just a tad since we have a lift. Throw the bolts together. So we got that in a little bit, and I'm gonna play with the lift again. I'm gonna drive it forward. I'm gonna take our dog and move him a little bit. <clears throat> Just a tiny bit. All right, and then maybe down a tad. We'll kind of try to pull it together a little bit on the bottom. And, you know, working just the bottom or just the top is what you wanna do first. And then uh, wiggle it for a while, pull go through and put the nut on. All right, so then <clears throat> one, one thing we did is we, we didn't really get in a hurry to like tilt the engine back. We did the bottom first. We haven't tightened them yet. <clears throat> and we left it away a little bit because we wanted to get the rubber dampers in easy. That way we don't have to pry and things like that on the assembly. We're trying to make it as easy as we can. We also make sure that our airplane has no way of falling on its tail because that just becomes a real bad day. Um, <clears throat> we got our AN6 washer, our modified fender washer with the smaller curve towards the engine. And we're gonna just check on that as we 
as we uh, tighten it up. And then we've got a full size. And then through the engine mount. And um, I am going to lift the tail just for a second. But before we do, we're going to install the other side up to this point, and then we lift the tail at one time and put the nuts on. So we've been tightening everything up until it bottoms out. Uh, as you can see now with this one, we clearly, if you shoot this way, you can see that um, we're missing the engine with that special washer that we made up. And when we... Uh, we tighten these bolts like I said there's a steel insert so you will clearly feel it like right there on bottom that and then we just take care of all the straps get rid of the rest of them and then we should be able to have a little bit of a celebration of a newborn Zenith with a Viking engine yeah. Woo <laughs> <laughs> taking it with us. Uh, Fork was taking it with us because we don't have any strap with us. <laughs> Roger's like, what's doing? Roger's the supervisor down there. Yeah, what's our supervisor doing? <laughs> Sleep on the ground. So, to say that again, now we should have a newborn Zenith with a Viking in. Uh, I think it got deflated.